Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are to learn fasi. Are to learn mudimato. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We thank God for the spirit of God that is moving in this place. We want to welcome every single person that is in this place. And we trusting the Lord that God will greatly help us this morning. If you believe it, shout praise the Lord. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We want to quickly go to the word of God and share the word of God because the word of God is all what we need in our lives. In the beginning, before everything be could be begun, there was the word. In other words, the word is the, is the only thing that began the beginning. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was... Amen. The word is God himself and we are going to share that word. And we got to understand when we talk the word of God and there is a situation in your life, you got to understand that that situation has got to move. When the word of God comes in, things that are not right in your life must go out. How many of you believe that? Amen. When the word comes in, Sicknesses must go. When the word comes in, those things that which you need in your life must come with the word as well. Shall praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why I have vowed to God when God called me, I vowed to him that I will never speak any other thing except the word. Because it's the word that can help the people of God. Shall praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Let's open our Bibles from the book of Psalm 20. We're going to be reading there in verse 7 and 8. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord. Give the Lord a hand of praise, somebody. Now, I've got to explain this a little bit so that we all can understand and uh, so that we all can flow with this verse of scripture and the good Lord will bless us. Lift up your hands and say, I am ready for the word. Hallelujah. In the olden days in Israel, when they went to war to battle with their enemies, to war against their enemies, they will put together chariots and they will put together some horses. Now, horses will always uh, represent swiftness or speed or doing things in a quicker manner. And then horses, I mean chariots will always uh, talk about war. So when the Bible says some trust in chariots, the Bible is indicating to us that we, we, we've got people who know what they have when they go before their enemies. They know what they are carrying as they go before their enemies. At times they know on how swift and on how quick to solve a problem, this thing that which they have is. They know on how fast, how quick it can solve their problem. That's why the Bible says some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. Now, when, when, when the Bible says some trust in horses, 
It means they know how quick and swift this thing is in trying to solve their problem. And they put their trust on that thing. Hallelujah. But we remember the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. When some have got tools and weapons to fight their enemies, when they remember their tools that help them to fight their enemies, we always remember the name of the Lord. In the same spot that they say this can help us, we say the name of the Lord will help us. If you understand what I'm I'm, I'm trying to say. Lift up your hands and shout praise the Lord. Lord. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are lots of things that the devil brings our way. There are lots of challenges that the devil brings our way. We don't have any other solution except the name of Jesus. We face every challenge we come across in the name of the Lord. I once told you about what one man of God, um, these giants of faith, more especially in our country, South Africa, has ever said. He once said, he preached a message, and the message was trusting upon the abilities of the Lord only. That was a very challenging message, trusting upon God's ability only it's different to when one says trusting upon God's ability stops there only Amen. amen we need to understand that this God is able to do exceeding the abundance of what we think or ask he is able there is nothing that God cannot do There is absolutely nothing that God cannot do. Nothing. He can do anything. Anytime, anyhow. Shout praise the Lord. We need just to trust. Put our trust on him. He can do anything, anytime, anyhow. This God is able. It's able. It's able. It's able. We just need to put our trust on him. Amen. When we trust him, he acts. Amen. When we do not trust him, he doesn't. God is powerful to those that put their trust on him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall I praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, the, the, the verse that we read, it says, some trust on horses, Some trust on chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord. It doesn't say, it doesn't just say we will trust. It says we will remember. In other words, when things are tough, when things are coming our way from every side, we shall remember the name of the Lord. We shall remember the name of the Lord. There is one thing that we cannot forget. It's on how powerful this name is. Shall praise the Lord. We shall always remember the name of the Lord. We shall always remember the name of the Lord. Let the devil come from all direction. We shall remember the name of the Lord. Let witches come and try and put us down. We shall remember the name of the Lord. We shall remember the name of the Lord. We shall remember the name of the Lord. Lord. When things press us from all sides, we shall remember the name of the Lord. When the devil hit us with sicknesses, we shall remember the name of the Lord. When he has hit our finances, 
and we feel we can't continue anymore, we shall remember the name of the Lord. And what is it that God is trying to tell us? God is telling you that there is nothing in your life that the name of the Lord can do. When you are down financially, call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. When you can't pay your debts, call on the name of the Lord. Huh. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Call on the name of the Lord. You know when you say Jesus, he comes in. And he saves you. You know what name this man was given? He was given the name and when he was given that name, the Bible says he gave the name to the church as a gift. He gave it to us as a gift. <laughs> he says, it's, it's kind of like he says, this name was given to me. That anybody that believes in this name can be saved. But he says, it's not only, it's not enough for you just to believe in the name. I give it to you. And I know what you say. You say, where do we get that in the scriptures? Acts chapter number 4, verse 12. Can you give it to us quickly, please? Let us read. Nor is there salvation. Mm. Given among men, given among men, by which we must be saved. There is no other name given among men. Given. The name is given. There is no other name that is given except the name of Jesus. Wow. So this name was given to Jesus. But it was as well given among men. And this name is the name of Jesus. And there is nothing that it cannot save you from. There is nothing that it, it was given for salvation. It is, there is nothing that this name can save you from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you are in trouble, remember this name. Remember this thing. Even if you don't say many things. Just say the name. Your trouble is so much scared of the name. When you shout the name, your trouble melts. Melts. Trouble ya we are to lose ham salwan. Ya to lose. Challenge ya we are to lose. It's only that even when it has melted before the name, you can still feel the effect. And that's what blinds Christians. Because when you feel the effect, you, you think it's still there. It's only that you people, you lived in these days. In our days, whilst we were still small little boys, petrol was not smelling in the same way it's smelling today. Things do change. In the, those days when a car has passed three hours later, you will still smell the petrol. It's the effect. It doesn't mean that the, the car is still there. You will feel the effect, but the thing is gone. So you've got to understand the devil that way. That at times he will hit you with something. When you call the name of Jesus, you will still feel the effect. But it doesn't mean the thing is still there. It's the effect. How many of you have ever been bitten by a bee? When a bee bites you, it leaves something in you. We call it sting. That thing is the thing that inflicts pain in you. When we take it out, 
you will still feel that you were bitten by the bee. It's the effect. But in fact, in real truth, the sting, it's removed. The real thing, it's removed. But if you leave the sting within your body, you'll keep on selling and selling and selling and selling because the sting is still there. But you remove the sting, you will still feel the effect of being beaten by the bee. But it won't be long. Are you hearing me? Remember the name of the Lord. Remember the name of the Lord. We're in verse 8. They have bowed down. Now those that trust in chariots do what? Bow down. They bow down and they have fallen. But listen to what the Bible says. But we have reason. Now, listen to me carefully. Child of God, there are things in your life that will put you down. God agrees. Things that will, will, will destroy your morale. You don't feel like you are active anymore. You don't feel like you can raise up your head anymore. Even when you greet people, you apologize when you do not do anything wrong. Sorry, the guy. Ki sorry ai. Kauruzu secha mutu. Sorry, le tuil. Sorry, ali kereke. Ki sorry ai. Pucha mutu ariye kereke. Sorry, dulane mo. What's going on? Why are we apologizing when we did not do anything wrong? It's because there are things in life that will always make you feel that you are not worthy. Amen. Amen. You look at a person, you feel like, oh, I'm not worthy to talk to this person. So all the time you begin by apologizing. There are times whereby you sit among certain people and you feel like, okay, these are two big people I'm not worthy to be because of what you're going through. And listen to me carefully. There are things that will put us down. But when we trust upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, you shall rise. The Bible says, you shall rise. Let them laugh at you today. Let them look at you and gossip about you. Let them look at you and talk bad things about you. But you shall rise again. That day is coming when you shall rise. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I'm not going to be in shame forever. I'm not going to be in this trouble forever. I'm not going to be laughed at forever. I shall rise. Say I will rise. Say I will rise. In the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. You, you won't be in shame forever. Don't, don't look at what you're going through and think it shall be there forever. No. There is nothing that is permanent under the sun. Nothing is permanent under the sun. That trouble is, is just bad for a short moment. It will endure just for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Shout hallelujah. Joy comes in the morning. Your morning is coming. When you will begin to celebrate. When you will walk like a gentle woman. Hallelujah. Even your steps shall change. Because God is on our side. And if God be for us. Nothing shall be against us. Shout it! There are times where you have to look at the devil and say, Davy, you can write me off for now. You can write me off for, for now. But I shall rise. I shall rise. I shall rise. I shall rise. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you understand what I'm talking about, church? Do you understand? There is nothing 
that is going to be there permanently in your life. The Bible says all things shall pass away. It's only the word of God that will leave a permanent mark in your life. Yeah. All these things shall pass away. All your trouble shall pass away. All your persecutions, challenges, trials, temptations, and the things that the devil is bringing your way shall pass away. But the words of God in your life shall remain forever. What God has ever spoken in you shall remain forever. Shall praise the Lord. Say all things shall pass away. The word of God in my life will remain. My problem will pass. The word will remain. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Mm. Now lift up your hands and shout praise the Lord. All things, all things. You know, the Bible says, if any man is in Christ, old things have passed away. And behold, all things are new. Yeah, we're waiting for that moment where things will begin to be new. No, 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 no. no. Hey, hey, hey. I'm hearing another scripture in my ears. In the book of Isaiah, the Bible says, look, I am doing a new thing Amen. now. Now, when you want to deal with God, learn not to dwell on your past. Amen. Learn not to dwell on things that have been happening yesterday. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. God, God is just the same yesterday, today, and forever. But he's not the God of yesterday. He doesn't dwell in your yesterdays. He doesn't dwell in your yesterdays. I say he does not dwell there. He does not remain there. Oh, glory to Jesus. I am saying God does not remain in your yesterday. When the devil attacked you yesterday, he does not remain there. When you move in your today, he moves with you. When you move in your tomorrow, he moves with you. In the same way he moved with Moses. In the same way he moved with Joshua. In the same way he moved with Elijah. He moved with Peter and Paul. He shall move with you. Shout hallelujah. He shall move with you. He shall move with you. He shall move with you. He shall change situations in the same way. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same. He is the same God. Hallelujah. What am I telling you? I am telling you that there is no situation that will stay in your life forever. Never. I say no, no. I say near, near. No, no, never. 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 He is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. Now, the problem the problem is our eyes. The biggest challenge that we have is our eyes. In Psalm 121, verse number 1, the Bible says, I will lift up my eyes. Stop there. I will lift up my eyes. When is that time when you're supposed to lift up your eyes? It's when the devil is pointing at something in your life. When the devil says, you have this challenge, that's the time to lift up your eyes off your challenge to the hills. Why hills? Why hills? Why hills? It's because God in the 
Old Testament, he was associated to mountains. He was known to be the God of mountains because mountains were looked at like as a symbol of might, power, might. So the psalmist says, I will lift up. Lift up means take off and put it somewhere. Amen. Take off your eyes from your problems. Put it on the might of God. Put it on the abilities of God. Put it on the, on the strength of God. And when you do that, your challenge will bow. You got to lift up your... Now, listen to me, child of God. When the children of Israel were beaten by snakes, they were commanded by the word of the Lord to lift up their eyes off snakes and look at the snake that was hanged on the pole. And the Bible says anyone that would do that will be healed from the biting of the snake. It's as easy as that. So this is to say that the biggest challenge that we have is the challenge of our own eyes. Our own eyes. We so much looking onto what is happening in my life. Hence complaints. We so much looking onto what the devil, what people are saying about my situation. And then we get fixed in those situations. But we need to learn to fix our eyes. Lift up our eyes unto Jesus. The Bible says, lift your eyes unto him, the author and the finisher of your faith. He is the author and is the finisher of your faith. So put your trust on him. Lift up your eyes to him. Look unto him. Put your trust on him. Depend on him. Depend on him. Even when there is pain, depend on him. Don't look at your pain. Look at him. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. Father, we thank you for the ministry of your word. And mighty God, I pray that this word be planted and germinate and bear fruits in the lives of these people. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ and I thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise God.